Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if you are new. In this video we are going to be talking about my favorites and my fails for the month of March. Um, I am dressed similarly to the last video, continuing with the wino theme. Branding. We'll call it branding. In this video, we'll be talking about my favorites and fails for the month of March. I bought a ton of crap. I mean, not crap. A lot of these things were good. I bought a lot of makeup and skincare stuff in the month of March. March was not a good month for me as far as budgeting. Um, so I have a lot to talk about. Um, I'm going to limit it to 10. These are the ones that I felt most strongly about, either positively or negatively. I'm going to do this in the same style that Jen Loves Reviews does it. The 10 with the, like, 10 through 5 being the worst, 5 through 1 being the best, um, and just a countdown from worst to best, because I just really like that format. I don't know if that's, like, illegal. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. So that is what we're going to talk about here in this video. Number 10. This is the Problem Solver Mask by Mae Lindstrom. <sighs> the reason that I am putting this at number 10, the worst item for the month, is I was really excited about this. This was a big disappointment for me. I have a lot of problems. I was looking for a solution. Um, this mask was $100, so for that price, I feel like it should be solving my indecisiveness, my self-esteem, fixing my car, ending world hunger. It should be solving some really large problems for that price. Um, however, for the price, hold on, I, I made some notes. I wanted to be organized here. So if I'm looking down at my phone, please don't be distracted or try. Well, I'm sorry if it's distracting. I can't really ask you to not be distracted. Um, so for $100, you do get 8.45 grams oh no 8.45 fluid ounces i'm confused as to why it's in fluid ounces because it's a it's a powder um i like that it's a powder this really extends the shelf life of it when you mix water in with it that's when the ingredients activate and then you put it on your face you leave it there for about 30 to 45 minutes it's a clay mask it dries down you can see it drying and then you wash it off um and you, honestly, this is a buttload of product. Like, this mask will probably last me, uh, this mask will probably last me for a very long time. Especially long, because every time I use it, my whole face peels off. Um, so I probably won't be using it a ton. I don't know what it is, you guys. I was back and forth putting this in and out of my cart for so long. Everyone has glowing reviews, like, this is amazing, totally changed my life, didn't believe in masks before this. I've used this, I think, four times now. Every single time my skin has gotten so, so irritated. Like, and I'm looking at the ingredients, the ingredients are good. Like, pretty much every ingredient in here is a natural, active ingredient. Like, it should be doing amazing things for my face. Let's, let's dig into the ingredients a little bit. There's charcoal which is detoxifying it has um, a couple different kinds of clay in it it has raw cacao which is an antioxidant and is supposed to be anti-inflammatory although I find this mask kind of inflames my face more than anti-inflames it warming spices clove cinnamon nutmeg cayenne pepper turmeric powder it has an absorbic acid which is vitamin c it has vitamin e vitamin a which is retinol or retinoid it's organic it's fair trade it should be great it has mallow root which is supposed to be calming but i do not find this to be calming at all on my face um one thing that i kind of question is the seventh ingredient in here is baking soda um bicarbonate a sodium bicarbonate is what it says on there but doing some googling i realized that is baking soda seventh ingredient is fairly high up on the ingredients list um i just don't think baking soda goes on your face it's incredibly basic um which i think people tend to mistake things that are less acidic and more basic for being gentle however you know what else is really basic bleach lye Stuff you clean your toilet with, 
Like, basic is very harmful, and I don't know if you want something like baking soda on your face, and I'm not really sure why it's in here, although it seems to be working for a lot of people and solving their problems. However, every single time I put this on my face, it burns. Like, it burns so bad. And I put a lot of shit on my face. I microneedle my face. I use acids on my face. I do acid peels on my face. I have given myself a chemical burn on my face more times than I can count because I put a ton of stuff on my face. Like, I harsh ingredients are, if they'll work, if they'll make my skin better, like, I would... I would set fire to my face if it would improve my skin. Like, I don't care. But this, like, really, really hurts. Like, it, when I put it on, my eyes water and my nose runs. Like, I feel like I have just eaten a, like, packet of hot sauce. Like, you know when you eat spicy food and your nose runs? That's what happens to me when I put this mask on. I don't enjoy the smell of it. It smells like, I don't even want to smell it. It smells like very warm and spicy. It kind of smells like black licorice or good in plenties to me. And I think I have like, you know, if you like drink a certain kind of alcohol and you get like alcohol poisoning or get really sick from it. And then whenever you smell that smell, like if it's like coconut rum or something, then every time you smell coconuts, you're just like, Ugh. like that's kind of how I feel about this mask. Not that I really liked black licorice to begin with, but I just associate the smell with the pain that it causes me on my face, and I, I don't like it. I'm traumatized by that smell. Um, it just, it, every single time, like, it has the warming spices in there to increase circulation. Like, it is supposed to mildly irritate your face to kind of increase circulation and cause, like, your face to want to, you know circulate I guess um, and plump up however for me my face just stays red for days every time I use it I don't use it on my eyelids but every time I've used it on the rest of my face my eyelids peel off um, like I get I when I was using this and then I put on the L'Oreal infallible fresh wear which has alcohol as one of the top ingredients in it I was I put this on and then I wore this for several days which I think just like exacerbated the irritation more and the skin was like peeling off around my face like around my mouth like just like red here and whenever I would put makeup on just peeling for like six days from the combination of these two products I just I don't it doesn't like it does I will say I might just use this on my nose in the future because it doesn't irritate my nose and it does except the smell but it does um get rid of my blackheads it is one of the few things that I have ever found actually the only thing I've ever found besides like a facial that gets rid of my blackheads I have big pores on my nose they're always full of blackheads I pop them they come right back this actually does clear those up so I will say that for it um Otherwise, I the rest of my face just looks bad because it looks super irritated and then it's just not worth it to me, especially for the price. So that's why this is coming in at number 10. Number 9. Number 9 is the Laura Mercier Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. This is $48 for one ounce of product. One ounce is pretty standard for a foundation. Um, $48, pretty standard like middle tier pricing, um, not super luxury, not drugstore, just kind of in the middle of stuff you see at Sephora. This isn't really outlandish in the price. Um, this, this does have some skincare ingredients in it. It has vitamin C, which we know is an antioxidant, good for brightening, silver ear mushroom extract, which I had never heard of, um, but I guess can be a Something happened with my notes here. Can be plumping, can is a humectic humectant, so draws moisture from the atmosphere into your skin. Also has glycerin, same thing, humectant, draws moisture from the atmosphere into your skin. Um this is very silicone heavy. It has like a few different kinds of silicone in it. 
Um, so that could be why it appears so heavy on my complexion. I just don't like this. I don't like it. It looks cakey on my face. It like instantly kind of breaks up here. I don't like the way it feels. It feels like it never really dries down. It's possible in the future I could try using a lot less and maybe like really buffing it into my face and it could work. But every time I've worn this foundation, I've just felt like something is like off about my makeup and I look at it and I don't like it. I just don't like the way that this foundation looks. It looks cakey to me. It feels sticky to me. It feels heavy on my face. I just don't like it. I think there's a lot better options out there um, for the middle range price category. There's just there's there's better stuff you can find um this just didn't do it for me I didn't think it looked good I didn't even think it looked radiant like it didn't have like a dewiness to me and just it was just like didn't dry and it was just cakey which is not the same thing so that's number nine number eight number eight where are you at this is the Dior show maximizer 3d triple volume plumping lash primer that's the name um so this you basically just put it on it's it's white you put it on before you put your mascara on it's supposed to make your lashes bigger um it's 29.50 which is a little pricey but i mean for dior i don't think that's that terrible you get 0.33 ounces which is pretty standard for mascara even kind of on the larger side for a mascara or lash product I don't think this is super ridiculously priced or anything the reason I don't like it it just didn't um work I have been really loving the milk makeup mascara the new kush one I really love the way this makes my lashes look I think it's feathery and fluttery and long and I just I like them I do naturally have long lashes and they do have a curl to them I have pretty good lashes naturally and I use some growth serum I got on Amazon. I don't really think it's doing anything, but it's possible that it's doing something microscopic that I can't see. And when I'm 80, maybe my lashes will be long. I don't know. But, um, so I do have pretty good lashes naturally. This might work better for someone with shorter lashes or lashes that don't curl. Um, but for me, this just made, like, the milk makeup makes my lashes look like long and fluttery and this just made them look clumpy and shorter because they were all like sticking together and I just I just didn't like it it just didn't do what it was supposed to do for me number seven I do not have this item because I returned it but this I will put a picture of it on the screen this is the milk makeup long wear gel eyeliner in the color bonus which is supposed to is a brown shimmery kind of shade um, it's $23 for 0.01 ounces which again is pretty standard pricing and size for mid-tier eyeliners such as things that you would see in Sephora this I just didn't like I needed a brown eyeliner for my waterline I actually still need one because I don't have this one any longer um I heard good things about it that it lasts like all day it's called the long wear gel eyeliner no I just I wore it a couple times when I was in Austin every single time I wore it it smeared all over my face like not with me like touching my eyes or anything it just came off and smeared and like I put it on my top lash line one day and that was just a huge mistake because it was just about all the way down to my neck um it's I just didn't like it it smeared all over the place it didn't stay on my eyelids for the price I think you can just get a drugstore eyeliner and it'll work just as good or better so I was not impressed by that and that is why I returned it number six the Sisley Phyto Poudre Libra this is their loose power loose power loose power um it, this is their loose powder in the shade irisy <laughs> this costs 95 dollars for 0.42 ounces the laura mercier loose translucent loose setting powder is 42 dollars and you get twice over twice as much as you get of this for wait less than half the price yeah less than half the price cover fx is around 30 something you get a little bit less but still considerably cheaper um this just for less than half of an ounce $95 I just don't think this is worth it honestly like it is a pretty finely milled powder it has a, a 
I almost said sickly, a sickly feel to it. It has a silky feel to it. Like, it's it's kind of confusing. The Okay, first, that's another thing I don't like about this is the component. This, as soon as I opened it and I put it, like, in a bag once, it got everywhere. I can't get it to sift back down into the thing. It's always floofing all over the place. It's hard to get my brush coated in a way that is, like, even... I just wish they had, like, a little... Do you see this? Do you see this? I just wish they had one of those little clicky things that went over this so it wasn't such a mess, especially for the price. I would just like to not, every time I use it, get translucent powder all over myself. The description of it is kind of confusing. It describes it as ra like radiant, satiny, and matte. So I'm not sure which one it's supposed to be. It is supposed to have a little bit of a radiance to it, and when I swatch it, I guess it's a little like glittery, a little. Um, but like on my skin it just looks matte. It's just a normal powder and it's $95 and I don't know why. It does have some skincare ingredients in it. Um, it has, what is it? It has titanium dioxide, which is a sunscreen. It has hibiscus flower extract, which contains AHAs, vitamin C, vitamin E, antioxidants, mallow extract, which is soothing, anti-irritant, and an emollient, or basically a moisturizer. Um, linden blossom extract, which has flavonoids, which contain powerful antioxidants. Glycosides, which is a monosaccharide that has water, water binding power. Uh, water binding power is oh my god water binding properties or is a humectant in other words vitamin e which we all know is an antioxidant good for the skin however i don't know if that's why they well they charge more because they're sicily that's why they charge more because of the name and then i don't know if that's like justified by the skincare ingredients that are in this um but i just have to wonder how much benefit is in putting skincare ingredients in a setting powder. Like, it, when you have a full face of makeup on, putting skincare, like, I don't put, like, face masks on top of my full face of makeup or serums. Like, so why? I don't know. I just don't think that does anything. Like, what would an AHA do on top of makeup? AHA is an exfoliate. Like, all I would imagine that would do would be to exfoliate your makeup. Unless you're wearing it on bare skin, but it's translucent, it doesn't have any color, so I don't know. As far as I can tell, it just sets your makeup. If Maybe if you have a really oily skin and all you want to do is mattify it, um, sure, but then it also says it's radiant and then also satin, so I don't know. I mean, it's not a bad powder. It has a good finish. It does its job. I just think for the price, like, you don't need to pay this. This doesn't do anything special, so that's why it's at number six. Number five. This is not, like, a new product by any means. This is, like, an old, like, cult favorite, like... I don't know if cold is the right word, but um, this is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, $64, one ounce, a little higher end of like middle tier makeup prices. Um, so honestly, I love this foundation. I really love it. It it might be my favorite foundation right now, actually. Like, it just, it looks good all day. It's the perfect combination of, like, dewy and radiance and matte. It's just, like, a perfect satiny, but your, like, natural oils kind of peek through. I think it's beautiful. I love the finish on it. It looks good all day, and I don't even set this. Like, I just leave it, and it looks awesome. Like, it is my favorite foundation. I just found it this month. I love it. It's amazing. However, the reason that I am putting it here at number five is the um, ingredients. I've really been looking more into ingredients lately, and a lot of the ingredients in here give me pause. Alcohol is the fourth ingredient, which is pretty high. I have not found this to irritate my skin the way that the L'Oreal um, Fresh Wear did. However, I still, like, I don't want to put this on my face every day. I use it sparingly because it has alcohol, and just for the price, I'm like, you should just be able to formulate it without alcohol or with alcohol lower down on the list like just stop putting alcohol and stuff that we're putting on our faces stop just stop like for instance the milk makeup hydro primer that just came out alcohol is the second ingredient like it's basically an antiseptic at that point like why or like fine but don't call it a hydro primer like it's not hydrating anyone because it's alcohol and water and like maybe like is it supposed to have weed in it? I think it is. Maybe some weed. I don't know. But just just stop. Stop it. Stop it. Like I'm just, I'm sick of it. Um. So 
And this hasn't irritated my skin, but it does have alcohol in it very high up on the list. It also has benzyl salicylate which is a fragrance and it is known to be irritating maybe more so than other fragrances and then in addition to that it also says fragrance in the ingredients list. Fun fact, um, companies don't have to put what they put in their fragrances on their ingredients. They only have to put fragrant. If the company wants to be very forthcoming they can do so but that's just kind of shady to me. I don't like when people do that and then it also has that in addition to the benzyl salicylate. I'll put that on the screen because um, I'm probably pronouncing it bad. And then it also has had some ingredients in there that some people were saying were, were endocrine disruptors but I couldn't really find a whole lot to back that up but that's obviously concerning um I just feel like just you know don't don't put stuff in my foundation that's gonna kill me or age me quicker just don't just don't hurt me I'm giving you money you can have my money and just don't I surrender just don't hurt me. Um, okay, so that's number five. That's why it's in the middle because I love it. I really love it. I wish the ingredients weren't such shit. And number four, we're getting into the favorites now. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. I just realized there's a pie in my room. A full unopened banana cream pie. Um, I brought this upstairs to put in the fridge and I guess I just left it on the floor in here. So... That's good. Number four is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. Um, this is $32, 4 milliliters. This is honestly my favorite concealer I've ever tried. I do not find it to be cakey ever. It's not drying. It always looks good. I have no issues with it at all. It reflects the light really beautifully. It's a little bit more of a luminous concealer, less of a matte one, which I prefer. I don't think there's enough concealers out there that aren't matte. I just, I don't really like my under eyes to be that dry. I just don't. Um, especially if you're setting them and then that's just a lot of... Um, so I really love this... Um, what is it? Concealer. I really love this concealer. Um, my issue with it is the amount of product you get for the price. Um, this is, which is why it's at number four. This is $32 for four milliliters, as I've said. Like, it looks like a reasonable amount of concealer, but if you, I don't know if you can see that, it like pushes up. I have used half of this half of this concealer. It, t I don't, I have never gone through a whole, no, I went through a Tarte Shape Tape once and it took me like a, a good six to eight months. I got this less than a month ago and I am halfway through it. I do not even use it every day. I don't use concealer that often. Um, why? Why? Well, it's because there's no product in here. That's why. Um, if you compare, for instance, to the Tarte Shape Tape, so this is $32 for four milliliters. Take a drink every time I say that. Um, Tarte Shape Tape is $27 for 10 milliliters. This is $5 less and this is more than twice, almost three times the amount of product that you get in here. So you're just, you're kind of getting ripped off. I just wish maybe more. I also just, I'm not huge on this. I feel like this tip like absorbs a lot of the product. Like, but I, and apparently this product is very valuable. So I would like to have it all. I would rather have it in more of a situation like this, um, where there's just a doe foot applicator and I can apply it as I see fit instead of this weird little brush doing it for me. I also just feel like this has to be like full of bacteria. Like look at, look at that. It just, it just looks like it is. I don't know. It just does. Number three. For number three, this is my Becca Anti-Fatigue Under Eye Primer. Um, I have always kind of had an issue with concealer. My first video ever was like how to like conceal and bake and whatever your under eyes without it looking cakey, um, which in that video it actually looked very cakey and it just... It makes me need like a drink of water just watching that video. Just all the like powder and the... So, <laughs> clearly I hadn't mastered it yet, um, never really did. My under eyes are just, I have bad dark circles, they're creasy, like it's just hard for me to get a good looking under eye. This has really, really helped. Um, this in combined, when I use these two together, never, never a bad under eye day, never. And this is something that was really hard for me to get good at. This is $32 for 3.7 grams. You don't get a lot, but I've been using this pretty much every day and I've 
I've only used like this portion up here. You don't need a ton. Your under eyes aren't a huge area and it's like very, I don't want to use it, but it's very thick. Um, it's kind of a similar texture to the the Tarte Poreless um, Primer that you put in, the putty, the Clean Slate Poreless Primer. It's just very thick. You don't need a lot. A little goes a long way and you're not really using it on a huge area anyways. I also feel like, and this could just be my imagination, but using this, I think that even when I'm not wearing it and not wearing makeup, my under eyes look better. I tend to have really deep circles in my under eyes um, all the time, pretty much, and I, d I haven't noticed that as much. It has looked a lot, I wanna say poofier, but that doesn't sound good. Um, supple, that sounds disgusting. Um, taut plumped they have looked a lot more plumped and less sallow than they normally look so i this does have some ingredients in it it has cucumber which is calming matcha green tea lots of antioxidants it has caffeine which is supposed to plump up your under eye um or is it supposed to no it's supposed to get rid of bags opposite goes back I thought that I was very sensitive to caffeine on my under eyes because the ordinary caffeine solution really messed up my eyes like my eyes were just like tiny little slits in this like swollen I had some weird allergic reaction to that there have been a few the ordinary products that have really irritated my skin some of them I like some of them not so much but this has caffeine in it it has a few other things uh, it has like a good amount of skincare ingredients and I just feel like it has generally like really changed the way my under eye makeup applies and just the way my under eyes look in general and I just really like it um so that's why it's number three number two the Charlotte Tilbury icon palette this is this was in my get ready with me trying new things video it's on my eyes today it is $65 for 25 grams of product it is 12 shades none of them are matte but I wouldn't say it looks really shimmery but I would describe it especially this bottom row is more of just a velvety finish than a shimmer the ones on the top are definitely shimmery but these are more of like just see it like a very silky velvety matte I love these shadows um I they, they just blend themselves like they blend really really beautifully they swatch like butter they go on the eyes like butter they have really great wearing staying power I just really like it my only complaint and why I would put it at number two instead of number one would be the color story I feel like it looks like you can get a lot of different shades different looks in here according to the palette you can get four um see with the exception of this shade these shades which I haven't really used too much and I'm sure I could really switch things up with those all of these when I use them I kind of get a similar like it just kind of has the same warm reddish brownish look like it's it's hard to get a whole lot like these two shades or I guess these three shades look like they would be very different. This is like a pinky, this is a gold, this is like a more champagne-y, but they all kind of look, they are kind of all gold. This one is like much lighter of a gold. This one's a little more cool and this one's a little more yellow, but they're kind of all pretty much the same. Um, these like middle ones all kind of make like a pinky like these two are really similar this one's a little more brown but I just find that like like if I use this row versus this row like it looks the same I don't know it's not too much of a diff I wish that she had just maybe made like the brown shades a little more neutral and a little less warm because I do just kind of feel like a lot of the colors are very similar on the eye um and like warmer than I would like I just wish it was a little less warm um but that being said i think the formula in this palette is amazing i think the packaging in this palette is amazing the pan size is a pretty big 25 grams for all the each pan is two grams of shadow so you are looking at 260 per gram of shadow which compared to the next palette i'm going to talk about is astronomically cheap <laughs> um so I love this. If you are a fan of these warm shades, 
if you're a fan of shimmers, even if you're not, because it's not like intensely crazy shimmery. Like it, it, you can definitely create like a soft, subtle look. It's gonna be warm. There is no getting around that unless you use these ones, but it's a beautiful palette. I really love her formulation. I just, I love the way these things blend. Like I just love, it's a pleasure, a pleasure to work with this palette. Love this. Really, really love this. So happy I went for this. I saw the shades and I was like, I'm not that into it, but I'm just going to buy it because I'm on a war path right now. And this is one of the things that I am very happy I bought. I don't always feel that way about everything I buy. Often I, I have regrets. I have made mistakes. But this, this was a good one. Number one, I just did a review on this. It is the, the, the Marc Jacobs Stiletto Palette. Um, you can look at my review, it's the video before this one. This is seven shades, they are all cool, cool neutral, pretty much all cool. Um, these shimmers, oh, I just love just putting my hands in them. These are just gorgeous. Same with the mattes are also very buttery. I think that these two palettes have a very similar, sim, what the fuck? Very similar formulation. In the Marc Jacobs, I would say the, uh, the shimmers are a little more wet feeling. The mattes, oh my god, the mattes are so creamy. Um, it's just, I just love this palette. I, I think the reason that I put this at number one over the Charlotte Tilbury is I just like the colors more. I find the colors to be very complimentary on me, very beautiful. I think the staying power of this is a little better than the Charlotte Tilbury. The price is kind of, I mean, the price isn't nuts. It's cheaper than the Charlotte Tilbury, but when you look at per gram, this one, so the Charlotte Tilbury was $65 for 25 grams. So about 260 per gram. This is $49 for 5.6 grams. It has about a fifth of the product that you're getting in here. It so it, look, it averages out to about 875 per gram. So it actually costs about four times as much, um, a little less than four times as much per gram than you're getting in the Charlotte Tilbury. So. The pans are just really small. Um, apparently they're not very deep either because that's really not a lot of product. Um, but I like, I don't care. It's still my number one. This is a, absolutely the item that I have grabbed for the most over this last month. I, my skin tone is definitely, um, light slash fair. It's, I could go neutral or I could go warm, neutral leaning warm maybe, but it is just, I have brown eyes, uh, brown hair, obviously. It's just very complimentary on me. I think if you have brown eyes, this will look really good on you. Um, cool browns and purples are just very complimentary towards our beautiful chocolatey eye color. Um, I just, I just love it. I love the way they blend. It stays on all day. It does not change in the way it looks. I love, the, I just, I feel beautiful every time I wear this palette. I never wear this and I'm like, mm, eh, I don't like that. I just, every single time I'm like, wow. Your makeup looks amazing, and you're beautiful. So I just, that's why it's my number one. It's not the most um, per gram, um, fiscally, whatever thing to do, but it's not the best deal in town, but I like it. I really like it. Um, very slim packaging. You keep it in your, your garter belt um, holster perhaps. Okay, so we're at the point in the video where I no longer have anything to say, but I'm still talking anyways. Um, so that's it. Those are my favorites and fails for the month. I hope you guys like this video. Let me know if you guys like these kind of videos. I've never done one before, but I've been watching a lot of favorites videos lately, and I really like them. So I wanted to make one. Um, so let me know if this is something you guys want to see in the future, and we can maybe start making this a thing. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm so grateful for all of you who watch my channel, and I love you all so much. Mwah.